Welcome to the second part of the AnimTree video tutorial series. In the last tutorial, we set up a basic AnimTree and got our character to play walking and idle animations. In this tutorial, we'll be expanding upon that to make our character play footstep sounds through Anim Notifies, explore how we can synchronize these sounds for blended animations, and build in our tree a little bit more to add crouching. Uh, while not strictly related to animation trees themselves, understanding Anim Notifies is an important part of the animation process. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll open up our content browser, open up our character, and have a look exactly what animation notifications or anim notifies are. I'll select my walk animation. Now down the bottom here you'll see we've got a tab called anim sequence and we have this section called notifies. Notifies are events that get played on a certain frame of an animation and these events are linked to code. So if we actually add a new notify here, expand this and check out our drop down, we have a bunch of various events. We can play a kismet sequence, we can play a particle effect, run a script, play a sound or whatever. Um, you can write your own custom animation notifications but that's outside the scope of this tutorial. Um, so what we want to do is use an anim notify footstep and this tells the code that we want to play a footstep sound. So underneath the option here we have foot down where zero is left and one is right unless you have um, sounds that are dependent on the foot that's being down you don't need to worry too much about that option but after we add that anim notify you'll see we get this little question mark box here which we can actually drag along the timeline this box needs to be on the same frame that we want the event to play so if we go through our animation you'll see that around about here for me uh, the right foot is down so We'll pop this animation notify here and we'll create a second animation notify, another footstep. You see again we get another little box here that plays when our left foot hits the ground, which we'll estimate it maybe just around about there and drag that along. Now unfortunately as I play the game, uh, you guys won't actually hear any of the sounds that are played. Um, now if you're using something derived, uh, if your pawn class is derived from UT Pawn, uh, then you already have a function there to play footstep sounds which is dependent on a material and all those kind of things. In this, uh, in my instance, I've just created a new function that's automatically called by this. If we just have a look at this code here, this simulated event play footstep sound um, is the function that gets called by the footstep sound and a notify. For now, I'm just playing a default uh, default sound. It's not material dependent or anything like that. How you handle that is up to you and program that you work with. Um, now, this code's already been compiled. So, if you jump in game and test that out, you'll hear your footstep sounds. Um, and obviously, you want to have footsteps when you're strafing as well. So, I've got my animation notifiers on my, my left strafe and right strafe. I did those in advance. But the other thing that you'll notice is uh, as these animations get blended then both these sets of notifiers will be played. If you're walking diagonally left then you'll get a combination of weird footstep sounds which sound out of sync and that's because the animation notifiers on both the forwards and strafing animations are being played at the same time. So we're going to look into what are called animation groups or sync groups to resolve this problem. So we'll open our animation tree back up here and sync groups serve two purposes. One of them uh, is to provide the animation system knowledge of which notifiers, which set of notifiers to play. Only one set of notifiers is played per animation group. So you don't want to put everything in one group or you won't get, you only get one set of notifiers. The other thing it does is synchronize animations that have different timings. So they start and finish at the same time. In the last tutorial, you'll notice that our um, diagonal walk looked a little bit funny, and that was because the lengths of those animations are slightly different, so they're not really synchronizing the way they should. So by playing or combining those animations, putting them in the same sync group, uh, they will be synchronized and the animation will look much better. So to add a new uh, sync group, what we do is select our root animation tree node, and we have an animation groups option here. So we'll just add a new one, and we'll call it walk. The other thing you can do is you have a rate scale here which is 
a rate that all animations in this group get scaled by. Now we'll jump into EC Female Walk and scroll down to our group option here and you see if synchronize is checked uh, then we have to make sure that then this node gets synchronized with others. If you uncheck it it's still part of the sync group um, so the whole notification thing still occurs but the animation doesn't get synced with any others. So our sync group name is walk my typing is horrible today uh, walk female left walk and female right walk now we also have this option here uh, force always slave so under the hood the way that these groups work is that the most dominant anim animation in the blend is the one that is chosen to be the master every other animation in the group that's being played becomes the slave now if there's any animation that we never want to be the master, even if it's fully blended to, that's where we can use this option, Force Always Slave, so it'll never be a master animation. Now if we just jump in game and have a quick look at this, you'll see that when we walk directionally that our blending is a little bit better. Um, the main problem with this is that the animation, our sideways animation you can see is only very prototype and placeholder, it's very slidey. So that's probably causing a vast majority of the problems that we're encountering here. And also if you're actually testing this out with your own audio, then you'll see that you don't have any duplicate sets of uh, animation notifiers with footsteps, um, but the footsteps all still play accurately as you're walking forwards, backwards and sideways. Unfortunately as I said you can't hear it here, you'll have to be testing that out uh, on your own local copy. So the next, next thing we're going to be doing is just adding a little bit more spice to our animation tree. Uh, we'll open it back up through the content browser, I'll probably should save that as well in case it crashes. Um, now firstly we use this UT Aim Blend by Idle, which only has two inputs, idle or moving. For any of you who have got multiple movement speeds uh, in your mod for instance, or game, you might have uh, running and sprinting, or walking and running, or something like that this node is not very useful to you at all. So what we'll do is we'll delete that node and we'll add a new animation node called Anim Node Blend by Speed. Now what this allows us to do is set, uh, we have this section here called Constraints and these constraints is actually the speed that the pawn is moving um, dictates which input uh, is, is effective for this node. So I'll, I'll give you an example because that's not a very good explanation. So we have child1, we'll just right click name it and call it idle. Add a new input by right clicking and rename that to be walk. <coughs> I'll add a third input and call it run. Now I'll link my idle up to my idle animation. And you can see that the constraint for child0, which is this one here, is 0. So at a speed of 0, this is our active blend, or active child. Now, between 0 and 1, so anywhere between 0 and 180, then child 1 is our active blend, our active child. Between 180 and 350, child 2 is our active child. Between, two and, uh, between 350 and 900, child 3 is our active child. So for this character, our walking speed is 220. So just to account for any errors that might come up in calculation, we'll just say between 0 and 230, because the vast majority of the time it's going to be fairly close to 220. Um, and the walk, the uh, running speed for this character is around about 490, so we'll say 500 to be safe. Um, we also have these options here, blend up time and blend down time. Um, these, uh, the blend time, as you'll see in a lot of other nodes, there is uh, a, a blend in and a blend out, or a blend up and a blend down. Uh, these properties are just how long it takes to blend between various types of the various sets of animations. So if we're playing the idle and then we start walking, rather than waiting or you know until our speed gets suitably or rather than snapping to the first animation, uh, to, to the next animation, we can blend in so it blends between the idle and the walk or it blends between the walk and the run as our speed changes appropriately. And you know conversely it blends backwards from run to walk to idle. Um, point one is probably a suitable value uh, for these. I've found that uh, good values for other things, uh, various other kinds of animations, is somewhere between 0.15 and 0.35. It 
it's probably best if you play around with those yourselves to try and get an appropriate result for whatever your animations are. The great thing about these blend in and blend out times is that we don't need to account for transitional animations unless we're looking at really complex animations. If we have a crouch idle and a standing idle then the engine will handle uh, interpolating between those two. So all the, the, the positioning between the idle and the crouch the engine will blend for us. So we'll go ahead and hook up our walk to our anim node blend directional here and we'll also just add another anim node blend directional break off all those nodes as our run animation um, obviously again we just create new animation sequences hook them up and set the appropriate options uh, once again for your run you should be creating a new animation group, I've got one for walk, you should be creating one for running as well um, I've only got a forward run animation for this character I'll chuck it in there just so I can show you how this works and my run animation is EC female run alright now my pawn's default speed in this is 220 which is the speed of the walking once again I'll just save this package quickly so if we jump in game and have a walk around you'll see I'm kind of walking at this basic speed I had myself a console command to be able to set this if I set my speed to 490 which we discussed before was the speed of our run you'll see we've got the running animation playing and our pawn is obviously moving much faster and if I set it back to 220 then we've got our, our pawn walking along there again now the final thing we're going to do for this tutorial is add support for crouching. Um, so we'll just adjust our nodes out of the way and add a new animation node blend by posture which gives us standing and crouched outputs. So we'll add this one, connect these up and once again for our crouched you would, uh, unless you've got different crouching movement speeds, sprint crouching I'm not sure uh, we can simply just add a blend by idle again for the crouched and an anim node blend directional for our crouch moving and an anim sequence just for our crouch idle and this is the kind of tree you'll end up with once you set up all your own crouching animations uh, once again this character unfortunately doesn't have any crouching animations so uh, I can't really demonstrate it to you but obviously you can set this up yourself with your own character and once again you'll probably also want to add yourself a new group for all your crouch movement um, that's all for this tutorial uh, hopefully now you'll have your character doing much more in game uh, hope you enjoyed this one, it's been useful and tune in for the next one cheers